22% of homes no longer use a traditional landline for telephone service. If 50 homes are randomly surveyed, what is the average number of homes we'd expect to find that do not have a landline? What is the standard deviation for the number of homes that do not have a landline out of 50 surveyed homes? Would it be unusual to survey 50 homes and to find that only two of them did not use a landline? Okay, this question asks a lot of things. The first thing it asks us, though, is, you know, what is the average number of homes we'd expect to find that do not have a landline? So we're looking for the mean here. And then it says, what is the standard deviation? That's the next question. And then it said, would it be unusual? Would it be unusual? So these are all key phrases that indicate what we're supposed to do. The average here um, is basically, it gives us some information. They want to know the average for the problem. Well, when you're faced with a problem that asks you to do the average, normally we expect to see like a list of numbers, right? If there's a list of numbers, we would you know, add up all the values and divide by the number of values. Well, that's not this problem, of course. There's no list of numbers to work from. Um, another possibility is that it's an expected value problem, in which case you would have a bunch of numbers, like x values, and you would have a bunch of corresponding probabilities, and you'd set up a table, you know, like x times p of x. Again, I don't see that here either. We don't have a bunch of values. We don't have a bunch of probabilities. We don't have much, really. So what we do have, though, when we look carefully, is we see that we have one probability, or one percentage. We see 22 percent. So that's like a proportion, a percent, or a rate. We have that, and that's handy. And we have another number. In fact, it seems the only other number in the problem, these 50 homes, right? The 50 homes. And when I think of that, then I think, hmm, this is probably a binomial probability problem. And they're probably giving us information that will help us fill in this very simple formula, the simple formula for um, the average of a binomial distribution. The mean is equal to n times p. And, you know, this makes a perfect match for what we're given. We're given an n, a total number of items or trials, right? We're going to survey 50 homes, so those are our trials. Each time we survey a home that's considered a trial, we have 50 of those trials. And then we have a percentage, right? 22%. That's enough to get the mean if this is a binomial scenario. You should, you should go through and check to make sure it is binomial in nature. And of course, we can do that. We can say 50 homes are going to be surveyed, so that's a fixed number of trials. We have a constant probability of success. 22% of homes no longer use... Um, a traditional landline for telephone service, right? And then uh, we go forward from there and we say, okay, um, what else do we have to check? Is it, are the events independent? And yeah, if they're randomly selected homes, then we probably would not expect one home to affect another home, right? If it was a family, maybe the family has a similar philosophy, but um, if it's a randomly selected home around the country, we probably don't expect any dependence, so the events are independent. Um, you know, from there, I think we're basically good, you know, because we have the last condition easily met, which is that either you have a home telephone line that's the landline or you don't. So it's a two possible outcome scenario. So it's binomial in nature. Now, if it's binomial, then we just plug in the numbers and we get our mean, right? So let's do it. N times P. That's easy for us. That's going to be 50 times 0.22. And that's it. Very good. So um, our solution then for the problem for this one turns out to be 11, of course, right? But the important thing is, is that now we know the average number of homes, right, that would no longer use a traditional landline for service, right? 22% of homes no longer use a traditional land sign. It says, what is the average number of homes we expect to find that do not have a landline? It would be 11 homes out of the, out of the 50 surveyed. Typically, we'd get 11 out of 50. All right, now from here, what you want to next is to actually go on to say, um, um, what's the standard deviation? And if you know it's binomial, you're going to fill in the following formula. So you'll have sigma is equal to the square root of n times p times q. All right, now n and p we already had from the previous problem. In fact, we already know what that result is, but we'll fill it anyways. It's 50 times 0.22, and then we need q. So let's remind ourselves what q is. Q is all the leftover probability. If there's a 22% chance that a particular home does not have a landline any longer, then what's the leftover amount? Well, it'd be 78%, right? So 100% minus 22% gives you 78%. So you would say that 78% of the homes um, do not or do have an actual landline still in their house. So these are the three numbers you need. You multiply them, take the square root, and that'll give you your answer. All right, so since we have to do a square root, let's whip out our calculator for that. So we'll do... Um, 50 times 0.22 times 0.78. So I've entered all that into my calculator. I get the answer 8.58. And then 
I finally have to take the square root. So I'll raise that to the half power, which is the same as taking the square root, and I'll end up with 2.93 approximately. So we've done some rounding there. It's approximately 2.93. Okay, so now we have our two numbers, our mean and our standard deviation. All right, so that's two parts of the problem, but we still have to answer this third part. Would it be unusual? All right, well, uh, to answer that question, you have a couple of tools that you can use. Um, one tool you can use is to create an interval. This is probably for a lot of people the harder way to do it, but we'll do it first. The interval would be the mean minus two standard deviations, the mean plus two standard deviations. We can use that as sort of a threshold for what's normal or typical. Um, you could cho choose three perhaps, you know, some, some professors or teachers might say they recommend using three, um, but I think two typically is pretty good. You know that in, according to Chebyshev's theorem, two standard deviations capture no less than 75% of the data. So we know that at least three quarters of all the data is going to be in here. So if we survey 50 homes, this will give us what we typically would expect to get for this measure, which is what the number of homes that no longer have a landline in them. So we can work this out and then compare the number they asked us to. They said, would it be unusual to survey 50 homes and find that only two of them, right? Only two of them do not use a landline. So let's go ahead and do that calculation, the mean minus two sigma, the mean plus two sigma. If you're going to put in the numbers from above, you'll see that that's what? 11 minus 2 times 2.93, comma, 11 plus 2 times 2.93. So we'll fill in that formula and see what we get. Okay, so I'll do 11 minus 2 times 2.93, and then I'll do that one more time, this time putting a plus sign, 11 plus 2 times 2.93. And when I'm done, I get this interval. I get 5.14 comma 16.86. What this is telling me, it's telling me that the typical or usual number of homes that I will find out of 50 that do not have a landline in their house are somewhere between 5.14 and 16.86 homes. So you could ask yourself questions like, you know, for example, would it be unusual to find 10 homes that don't have a landline? You'd say, no, that's not unusual because 10 is inside the interval, right? Would it be unusual to find only two of them that did not have a landline? Well, yeah, because two is outside of the interval, right? Two is outside. We might get anywhere from, say, you know, six, because five actually is not in the interval, right? Somewhere between six and, say, 16. Six and 16 homes, that's kind of typical when you survey 50 homes. You might find as little as six or as high as 16 homes that don't have a landline 75% of the time. That might be what happens. But, you know, to get only two that don't have a landline, two is outside of this interval. You know, on the number line, it would be below five. So it's outside of the interval. Anything outside of the interval, we would declare as unusual. And so in this case, I would say it's unusual. All right, fine. Is there another way to do it? Sure. The other way to do it is to use the z-score. We might have, um, you might remember from our earlier part of the course that the z-score formula helps us to determine if something is unusual. So if I do x minus the mean over sigma, where x is the thing we want to check to see if it's unusual, right? So let's plug in the x value, only 2. If we use 2 as the x value, we'll check to see if that value is unusual. Put the mean of 11, right? and then divide by the standard deviation of 2.93. And when we do that, let's see what we end up with. So we have 2 minus 11, which of course is 9, right? So negative 9 divided by 2.93. And when we do that, we get minus 3.07. Minus 3.07. So what's this number telling me? Well, if you remember on our z-score scale, we said that anything that was below negative 2 or above positive 3, two was considered to be unusual. Well, look at this number here. This number I would definitely declare as being unusual. It's minus three standard deviations below average. It's more than three standard deviations below average, in fact. That means if we had actually used three standard deviations in this interval, two would still be outside of the interval, right? And we know according to Chebyshev's theorem that no less than 89% of the data will be within an interval from the mean minus three sigma and the mean plus three sigma, right? So this number is definitely indicating that this amount, only two homes that um, do not have landlines, um, that, that in that case, that would be a pretty unusual result. There'd be something interesting about the 50 homes we grabbed then in that case. There'd be a special group.